Now, before we go on to more feature engineering, you may have noticed some discrepancies in the accuracy score. Here in our 80-20 split, where we split 20% of the training set as our simulated test set, we're getting 82% accuracy, and in the Kaggle kernel, we only get 76% accuracy. One of the reasons is that there is some randomness in the ways that these models predict. So the model we trained based on the 80% we selected randomly might just perform slightly better on this 20% we left as our simulated test set. Especially with the smaller training example, it is very easy to have this sort of discrepancy where predictions on one random selection does better than predictions on another random selection. Let me show you what I mean by running some tests on a different random selection of the 20% test set. This is the line where we split our 80% of training data from a 20% of test set. So from here on, I'm going to just refer to our simulated test set as test set. And we're using random state 42. This number essentially determines which 20% of data gets picked. So every time it's the same split. And it's set up this way because even though this is random, you might want to have some control over how the split is performed. So that comparisons from one test to the next test will be more standardized. Let me show you a quick example of what happens if we change this to, say, 0. Run this. Now we can see our accuracy score drops to 80%, so it drops 2%. So before we build another model with different features, in order to compare accuracy of that model to this model, we might want to take some sort of average to minimize this bias. To get that mean score, let me just move this, move this up. And we want to use the NumPy library, which should come with your Python. Then delete the unnecessary cells that we use for understanding. We essentially want to run these three cells for different random selections. Let's copy and paste that here. And use the numpy.arrange function. This function is going to return us a list of integers in between our start and end number. And we can also set a step size. What we want to do is for random state in mp.range 0 to 1000, these can actually be any number. Just make sure you get a good amount of random states. And I'm going to set the step size to 50. Use the random state here, then print this accuracy score and see what we get. As you can see now, the accuracy score changes by going in a range of more than 10%. Let's see what the mean of this is. Type cast the scores variable into a numpy array, and we can get the mean of scores. This is closer to what we see in the Kaggle kernel. It's still slightly higher than the 76% we saw, but as we've seen before, The test CSV Kaggle provided can look very similar to any of these random selections. But this is still good to know. It's good to minimize the effect of that randomness in sample selection when we're comparing different models built with different features. Let's say we happen to use this random state. This is going to suggest that our baseline accuracy is 83%, whereas if we take the mean, it's actually only 78.8%. Let's go back to the data frame and see what additional information we can fetch. In the baseline model, we drop the columns names, ticket, and cabin. So maybe there's something useful we can extract from these three features. We know there's a lot of missing values in the cabins column, so it's probably not worth it to attempt to fill in the values like we did with the age column. However, sometimes missing values are significant in the sense that there might be a reason behind why this passenger is missing his or her cabin entry, and this reason could be correlated with whether or not he or she survives. We can check if this is possible by printing out the survival ratio of people with non-missing cabin entries and people with missing cabin entries. So there's only around 30% of the people with missing cabinet entries who survived. Let's check out people with non-missing cabinet entries. And the values are indeed very different. So it looks like this is a feature we want. To incorporate this feature, we can create another column called this missing cabin and set that to equal to df at cabin.sna. And notice that this column will be boolean value, but with the extra trees classifier, it's okay to pass in an input as boolean. 
Now let's check out our average performance after we add in this feature. Oops, I just realized the test size was 0.2 before, so I'm just going to change that back and make the comparison. Unfortunately, it looks like adding this feature alone doesn't seem to improve our scores. You might have noticed this discussion section in Kaggle. In ongoing competitions, people sometimes release a new engineered feature that is useful in solving the problem. You can find inspiration in the discussion, and this will help you a lot in building a stronger model. For example, I found this piece of code that handles the name column, and I'll put the link to this kernel in the description below. Let's apply this to our data frame and see what happens. The name column looks something like this, and there's a title formatted as a space, some letter, and then a dot. So our title now is going to look like this. If we do a value count, we can see that some titles are frequently occurring, whereas there are some less common titles. Which is why in the discussion kernel, the author mapped all of the frequent occurring titles to unique numbers, whereas the less frequently occurring values to one number. Now let's see how this performs. Now that gives us a slightly higher average score. We've noticed that adding different features doesn't seem to help the model much, which sometimes is indicative of the model itself being not suited for the problem. For example, another parameter in XRG's classifier called max depth, which limits the maximum depth a tree in the forest can reach. The default is set to none, which means the trees can grow as far as possible before it meets some other limits. Let's set this to 10 and see what happens. Now there's a more apparent increase, but the change in this hyperparameter helped us more than adding in features. Seeing the effect of this, let's perhaps go back to our baseline features and take a look at the performance using just that. So skip these two cells. the score is actually even higher. Unfortunately, the conclusion, at least using the 20% test that we split it, is that adding these features didn't help. Let's see if that translates to the Kaggle test set. Because we didn't make any change to the features we used, we don't have to do any more processing on the test set. This classifier is now a modified classifier with maximum depth of only 10. Now predict and save it to submission.csv. Let's try submitting again. Now we get a slightly higher score than our 76% and we've jumped up 3,700 places on leaderboard. There's obviously a lot more playing around you can do. Sometimes adding different features requires an optimized hyperparameter for those features specifically, but hyperparameter tuning honestly is a topic that deserves its own video. Lastly, I want to briefly mention a method in the Extra Trees classifier library, and that is called the feature importance. These importances score map to the order of which the features are passed in. So for example, with our training set, the importance 0.17 describes the importance of P class. You can get a ranking of all the features you use in the training model in order to get some level of understanding in what the model is actually looking at when it makes predictions. Let's store this array into a Python variable called importances. Then use mp.argsort. This code is simply from how to do feature importances with forest of trees in the sklearn library. Here's where it gives the example. Then we want to actually print the rankings. Indices at f is going to give us the index to the column. And accessing that index in the columns array is going to give us the actual name of that column. And the importances array is going to give us the value of importance. Our model is looking at sex with the most importance, p-class, age, fair, 
and then all of these others are lower in the importance ranking. This is going to be it for this series. We have went all the way from understanding the dataset to making the first and second submission, and then began to understand what our model is doing. Please let me know if there's any other Kaggle competition you'd like for me to take a stab at or any other topics. See you next time.